that's interesting. Um, a last note from sellers, and I spoke to a couple of friends when uh, we, I just, we just discussed that we were going to do this, and um, one of the people who I spoke to is Lynette Duplessis from Pony Perfection, and she said, like, it's great that you're talking about what the onus is, you know, the responsibilities of the seller, but the buyers also do have some responsibilities. And you asked me this earlier on. And I thought a couple of the things that she said really were, were just very thoughtful and very courteous. And one of the things that she said to be on time for appointments when you're going to go and try a horse. Um, you know, everyone's built their day around that. They are running a business. Um, when you're going to go and try a horse, don't be dishonest about your level of experience. And I had someone, Janine's <laughs> laughing. I mean, it's just the stupidest thing to lie about. Um, I, I worked overseas at one stage and a girl, a girl lied about her experience to come and ride racehorses with us. And she broke her coccyx within three days. And she and it was just, we, we were just like, why, why would you? And she very clearly could not even rise at the trot. And one of one of the trainers, like top, it was being exported. It took off like a man out of a cannon down the long side. And I was just, so, and that's for people's safety as well as, as, well as the fact that you don't want someone destroying your horse. Um, she spoke about... Um, and, and But a few sellers have said this to me, that a lot of people go to try horses that are perhaps out of their budget with the hope that they can use the vetting to knock the price down. And I think, Janine, you said this very nicely earlier on, is it's the intention again. Mm. So so going to go and try a 500,000 rand horse with the 500,000 rand that you're able to buy, and the horse turns out to have a little bit of wear and tear that you're going to have to maintain, you negotiate, yep. is a very different discussion to knowingly go and try and try a horse. And finding fault afford. with it Purposely. so that I can now reduce yeah. the price to say, oh, you see, but this and this and this happens. Yeah. yeah. I certainly have found myself in positions where I have had buyers say, can you not just plant something, plant something for me as she is. Yeah. And I'm like, no, because very often I am being a mediator and advising the seller that they're going to have to take a discount on this, offer a discount, because otherwise the client's likely to walk away. Um, and I think it's the right thing to do. But if the horse is clean, it's clean. Mm. And there should be no... What a joy. Yeah. There, there, yeah. There, there, then there is no angle for the, the buyer to negotiate anything. And, it's, and so it should be. If, if yeah, they, as, they, as you both said, if you go and try the horse at that price and there is nothing wrong with it, mm. then that is the price. If you can get a discount, great. But if you're not offering one, then I'm certainly not going to get some mm. phantom pathology to try and negotiate a, a discount. Totally. Um, and, and then uh, a closing point was um, my friend Siobhan Records, who is a stickler for the correct terminology in the world, said that um, there also should be, and, and again, it's impossible to, I think, really define this, but I think it's the role of perhaps uh, you said you need to get to know your clients before you choose or decide if the horse is the correct fit, is the terminology around trying horses and what the difference is between for example, someone said, well, this horse is backed. And what they meant is someone has sat on its back. It's not <laughs> what I would consider back, just to be perfectly clear. 